Hey friends, welcome back. So glad that you have joined me today. This is our last video of this month, but man, it has been so fun learning about Moses and how God works with through his life and through the Israelite people to show that God always takes care of us. It's been a lot of fun. Well, before we get started, let's go ahead and let's pray. So hands up, bring them down, close your eyes, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your Bible. Thank you for the Bible, your word, which shows us your story. Thank you that we can see how that you always take care of us. Thank you for how you cared for Moses and the Israelite people. Lord, thank you for our time together. Lord, I pray that we would just glorify you in everything we say and do. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right, friends, for our opening activity, we are going to use some Play-Doh. And I have a question for you. How many of you like the beach. Oh, I do. I love the beach. And now that it's been warmer and sunnier, I cannot wait to get there and just enjoy the waves and the sun and just all the fun beach things. So for our opening activity today, I want you to make a model uh, with your Play-Doh about some of your favorite things to do at the beach. Or maybe it's not at the beach, maybe it's at a lake. It's a big body of water or something. So lake or beach or something like that. Maybe, let's see. Maybe you like to play soccer or volleyball. You can make a ball. Um, maybe you like to build a sand castle. You can build a sand castle. Or maybe you like to search for seashells, all those things. So you, maybe you like to do lots of things at the beach. You can make lots of different things. Maybe, let's see if I can do this, make um, like a boogie board. Because if I'm there and I'm in the water, I hope that there's a few waves to get to ride in. Usually wipe out a time or two, but it's still so much fun. Here's my boogie board. Maybe it's a beach towel. You just like to sit there and read. Whatever you like to do. Well, guys, send me a picture of some of your favorite things that you do at the beach. Well, today in our lesson, we're going to see that God is going to take care of his people. They're going to come up to a really, really big lake. We kind of call it a sea. And they're going to be in trouble, but God is going to take care of them. It's so nice to know that whether we're on land or near water, God always take care of us, takes care of us. All right, guys, but before we jump into our lesson, let's worship through some songs together. So stand on up and let's sing. loves me and he loved me first he rescued me when i was in a lurch and i won't worry worry about a thing to the left i'll fly 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 to the right i'll fly glide glide oh and i won't worry worry about a thing i'm gonna swoop down low 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 To the left, I'll fly, fly, fly to the right, 
Join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything, he's good in every way. He is always there for us, he's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love, he's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy, he's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more, he's good in every way. Come on now, join me. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything, he's good in every way. He is always there for us, he's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love, he's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy, he's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more. He's good in every way. Come on now, join with Come me. Come on now, join with me, everybody. 
All right, guys, let's do a quick review of where we have left the Israelite people and Moses. So remember, the Israelites, these are God's chosen people. He had a special plan for them. For way back from Abraham, where God made a promise that someday Abraham would have many descendants and that through his children, the whole world would be blessed. God also promised Abraham that he would give this really wonderful land to the, his people, to his children, to the Israelites. The, the, the Bible says this land is going to flow with milk and honey, which means it's just going to be a really great land where they could grow crops and it would just be the, it'd be a wonderful place to live. So God made that promise to Abraham. And we see generations past that during uh, when Joseph was alive, Abraham's great grandson, when Joseph was alive, there was this famine this huge fame that covered the whole world. And because that, the Israelites came and moved to Egypt so they would have food. Well, that's where they stayed and they, they you know, they got, they multiplied, they had more children and children. And eventually the Pharaoh or the king at that time had forgotten about Joseph, forgotten about what he had done to save the Egyptians. And he looked and he saw that all these people, these Israelites people, they were growing and multiplying and God was blessing them. And he goes, whoa, I'm getting a little worried. What if they decide to form an army and defeat us? So we've got to do something. So he made a decision and had all the Israelite pe people become slaves. They had to work for the Egyptians. They did really, really hard labor. They weren't paid for it. And even the Egyptians, the slave masters, they made it even harder for them. Even It was already hard, but they made it harder. And so they were there in this captivity. After 400 years, they cried and they said, Lord, please save us. And we know God takes care of us. And God had this plan that even though the Pharaoh even had all the baby boys being killed of the Israelites because he didn't want them to form an army, God protected Moses. And Moses grew up and God had a plan for him. And God chose Moses to come back, to speak to Pharaoh and to tell him to let God's people go, let the Israelites go. We saw that Moses was there and he's talking to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, nope, not gonna let him go. But then God, because he's powerful, sent these 10 plagues. So there's these really bad things that were happening to the Egyptians. So there was um, frogs that were everywhere. There was the Nile River and the water that turned to blood. There were gnats, there was sickness, there was darkness, like all these horrible things would happen. And after each one, Pharaoh would call Moses and said, take it away, I'll let you go. So God took it away. But then the Pharaoh said, nah, just kidding, not gonna let you go. But then we saw last week that there was this 10th plague, which was the worst one of all, that the oldest child, the oldest son out of every household died. But even in that, guys, God protected the Israelites and they celebrated this special feast of Passover. Well, after that 10th plague and Pharaoh's own child died, he said, just go, leave, get out. So the Israelites, they were packed and they were ready and they asked their neighbors, the Egyptians, for um, extra clothes and, and precious things like gold and silver and jewels and all these things and they gave it to them. So now the Israelites are ready and they left Egypt. God had rescued them. And we can see in the book of Exodus, they've kind of, they've been traveling and God's been leading them the whole time. During the day, God's presence, would he would lead the Israelites by being this huge pillar of cloud during the day so they knew where to go. And at night, it would be this huge pillar of fire. Anyway, they're going and they're traveling and then they get to where we're at today. So where our story is in Exodus chapter 14. This is kind of where we're going we're to pick up there. So they get to this place and they get to the Red Sea. Now this was... It was, it's like this giant lake because it's not the ocean, but it was so huge. It was like the ocean, big waves, really deep waters, and there was no way to get around it. It would take them forever to walk around it. And they couldn't go through it because they didn't have boats and wait, they couldn't swim all the way across it. It's so they just like, what, what are we gonna do? Well, as the Israelites are kind of there at the Red Sea waiting, 
Pharaoh back in Egypt realized, oh, we should not have let those Israelites go. Who is going to do all this work for us? We let ourselves go. What are we going to do? So he said, you know what? I'm going to go after them. So Pharaoh got um, his armies as well as people on 600 chariots. And that's like kind of like a wagon with a horse. They would go, take these to battle. So we got all these people and they go and they're going to, they went and chased after the Israelites to get them and bring them back. Well, there's the Israelites looking and facing this Red Sea that there's no way to get through. And then they hear, oh, something's coming. They realize that the Egyptian army was chasing them. And they are really, really scared and they're really nervous. And they ask Moses, Moses, what in the world? What are we going to do? What's, what's going to happen? We're, the Egyptians are going to come. They're going to kill us. Are they going to take us back? What's going to happen? Verse 13, so Exodus chapter 14 and then verse 13 is what it says. And Moses said to the people, fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. I love those verses. And I said, don't be afraid. God's got this. He's going to take care of you. You don't have to do anything. He is just going to take care of you. He's rescued you from the, from the Egyptians before. He's going to rescue you again. So Moses talked to God and the Lord gave him some instructions. And this is what God told Moses to do. He said, I want you to extend your arm with your staff, kind of like your walking stick, hold it over the Red Sea and hold it over there so that all the Israelites can pass through. So Moses obeyed. He held up his staff and the Bible says that the Red Sea literally parted in half. And that there was a wall of water on the right and a wall of water on the left. But there was this dry path for the people to walk through. It should have been like super muddy and a mess, but it was dry. Man, that's just God's power. He controls the waves. Nobody could have held back those waves for all the people to get through, but God did. So they saw this miracle that God had done. He opened the Red Sea and the Israelites went and they walked through there and I'm going to read for you in verse 21 it's what it says and then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back by the strong east wind all night and made the sea made the sea dry land and the waters were divided so the Israelites are walking through and the Egyptians are coming and they're chasing after them but because of the pillar of cloud they were able to kind of divide them and so the Israelites were able to come through and the Egyptians were a little bit confused but then they realized hey we're going to go through there too. The Israelites made it. We're going to go too. Let's just keep chasing them. So the Bible says that they go driving through, running through, riding those chariots, marching through. They get there and Moses lays down his hand. The Bible says that the waters return to the original place. And the Egyptians were there. So guys, all the Egyptian army, they drowned that day. But all the Israelites were safe and God protected and God took care of them. And this is a really cool verse that at the very end of chapter 14, this is what it says after all that happened. Verse 31, Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. They saw this and they said, wow, look what our God can do. And God is using Moses. He's a wonderful leader. We can trust him. We can trust God because God always takes care of us. And guys, this is a true story. This really happened. Everything in the Bible is true. So we know that God took care of his people. But not only did God rescue and take care of the Israelites, God rescues and he takes care of us too. God knew that we would be born this time. We would be here on earth in 2021. And he knew that we would be sinners. We've broken God's law. And because of our sin, we deserve to be separated from God. But God had a plan. He sent Jesus. Jesus came to earth. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned once. And he died on the cross to take our punishment. We deserve death and separation from God. But Jesus took that punishment in our place. And he rose again. And now we can have this forgiveness from our sin. And we can have a friendship, a relationship with God restored because of what Jesus did. And I'm excited that next month we're going to get to dive into that more and learn even more about what Jesus did and how he came to rescue us. If you have any questions about that, please talk to your mom or dad or find uh, a grandparent or feel free to talk to somebody at church that can explain to you even more how Jesus rescues us.
Okay guys, this is our last week of the month. So this is the week where we are gonna practice our verse one more time. I think you've got a pretty good handle on it by now, but let's practice saying it together. Maybe you can do it without looking. See if you can do it from memory. So here it goes. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Romans 8:31. All right, now before we get into our game today, let's watch our Bible Buddy video. Hello, hello, hello. It's your totally tubular buddy, Tina Termite. Get it? Tubular. Our houses are filled with lots of tunnels like tubes. We run through them nonstop to get stuff done. It's like a tubular maze. I've noticed your tubular tunnels look pretty fun too. We stay super busy because we never ever sleep. Part of the reason we never sleep is because we eat all the time. Do you like to eat? We can eat and eat and eat. We don't only eat wood either. Whatever we happen to be eating, we eat a lot of it. In fact, some termites can each eat as much grass in a year as a cow. Wow! And a colony can be made up of 100 to 1 million termites. So imagine all of us chowing down nonstop, day in and day out. Speaking of food, I have a joke for you. Ready? What did the termite say to the chair? Nice gnawing you. <laughs> Get it? Gnawing you? That's a wood one. I mean, a good one. <laughs> All joking aside though, here's what we can remember. God always takes care of us and he always makes a way for us. God made a way for the Israelites too. In the book of Exodus in the Bible, you could read about how God made a path right through the Red Sea. His people walked on dry ground. Talk about tubular. God made a way for his people to leave Egypt. And God always makes a way for us too. In the Bible book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31, it says, If God is for us, who can ever be against us? No matter what, God makes a way because he loves us. Remembering how God has taken care of us in the past, can help us trust God for the future. Remember when God helped you go to a new school? Or when God helped you get used to a new bed? Remember when God gave you what you needed and sent people to help you? God did it before and he'll do it again. God takes care of us. I'm glad I got to hang out with you cool humans for a while. You are pretty interesting creatures. But now it's time for me to get back to work. Got a munch on my lunch. Goodbye. Okay, guys, so just like kind of we started, we're going to stick with our beach theme today for our activity. So in your box, you should have a small beach ball. Get that out. Fill it up. Maybe you have another ball in your house or another big beach ball or some kind of fun beach thing. Go ahead and get that out. So today we're just going to practice saying the verse again to really get it in our minds. So let's see if we can say it without looking. Are you ready? Let's do this together. Here we go. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Romans 8, 31. So once you have your beach ball or whatever you want to use at the beach, maybe another kind of ball, I want you to Practice saying it. Maybe if you're by yourself, you can throw your ball up and see if you can say it super fast before you catch it, before it comes down like this. Ready? If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, I almost got it. I just didn't get the reference in there. Or if you have another um, mom or dad or brother or sister, you can take it and you can throw it back and forth. Practice saying the verse that way. Um, you could kick the ball around. You can bounce it back and forth, back and forth, whatever you want to do. But practice saying this verse. Remember, if you can say the verse all by yourself, um, you can make a video or you can tell it to me in person. I will have a special prize for you. But let's say it together again one more time. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Romans 8, 31. Now guys, this is such a powerful verse because guys, God does take care of us. 
He, nothing is more powerful than God, and He'll take care of us, and I hope that you remember that. Have fun practicing your verse. I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you again soon.